On today's episode of Let's Talk Drones, we have more leaks. And no, you're not experiencing deja vu. This is a new video with new leaks of a new drone from DJI. And what's even more exciting is it doesn't stop here. Of course, we'll share more leaks as we learn more about the drone we're gonna talk about today, but there's one whole other drone that we have leaks from DJI on. And I can't wait to talk to you about that in our next video. Let's get to business in this one though. Let's talk drones. What's up? It's Chris, the Drone Geek, and welcome to another episode of Let's Talk Drones. Let's Talk Drones is brought to you by The Droning Company. Check them out online at thedroningcompany.com. Make sure you get subscribed to their YouTube channel. Just go to the YouTube search bar and search The Droning Company. Lots of great content, some from yours truly, whether I produced it or was actually in it. There's lots of great content on that channel. The Droning Company. Make sure you check them out at thedroningcompany.com and across all major social media platforms. We have a brand new drone, it seems, coming out of DJI. We have more leaks that have been shown on Twitter, Facebook, LinkedIn. They've been all over the place. And this drone is going to be called the DJI Neo. Now, we know that for sure. There's no speculation to be had on that. This will be the DJI Neo for a few reasons. First of all, FCC listings have shown that the DJI Neo is going to be the name of this drone. On top of that, the leaks that we've seen have actually been the packaging for the drone, and it lists the drone on the packaging as the DJI Neo. If you haven't heard about this yet, get excited because this is a unique little drone that I'm excited to talk about on today's video. Before we get into my speculations on the drone, let's take a look at some of the images that have leaked of the DJI Neo. To kick things off, we're going to stay consistent with the experience you might have if you were to see this drone for the first time on shelves in a store somewhere. And we're gonna take a look at the packaging to see what we might be able to expect from this new drone. So some photos of the packaging were recently leaked. You'll see here, this is the front of the box for the DJI Neo. We do confirm the name once again at the top of the packaging on the front of the box. It is the DJI Neo. And this box is labeled as the Fly More Combo. I do want to make a quick note here. You're going to see some other images of the packaging which offer more information about this drone, but I don't believe the images of the packaging are consistent in that. I think that the images that were leaked are of different combos that you can purchase with the Neo. So just keep that in mind as we go through these images. They are not consistent. It doesn't mean you get everything that's listed on all of the images of this box. I, I'm really strongly suspicious of the fact that these are different packages that were photographed and then leaked subsequently. So anyway, we are looking at the Fly More combo here. And what I find most interesting about this particular picture is the DJI Neo appears to be some sort of a Cinewoop, maybe even a tiny whoop if you wanted to push it that far. It's probably on the boundary between a two inch and a two and a half inch drone. So pick your poison there. But despite that, we have the DJI RCN2, which is a controller that is used to control GPS drones. It's not the same type of controller you'd have with an FPV drone, whether it's a more traditional FPV freestyle or Cinewoop drone or something from DJI, like the DJI FPV, the Avada, or the Avada 2. The controllers are different, the way they're configured is slightly different, and the experience when you're actually interfacing with them is different, especially in that throttle stick. So that's one thing that's really catching my eye here, and it's something we're gonna talk about in my speculation section here in just a few moments. Let's move on to the next picture though, and this is what I was talking about a little bit earlier when it comes to the consistency in the images of the packaging. We saw a picture just a second ago of the DJI Neo with the RCN2. Now we're seeing a what's in the box panel on the packaging that includes the DJI goggles and the DJI RC motion controller. Just a really interesting contrast between the two packages. And that's sort of what makes me question how will the DJI Neo be flown? Now, if I'm not mistaken, you can only fly the Avada series with the DJI RC motion controller if you're in normal or sport mode. You can't actually do it in manual mode. So if that's the case, then at least we have a little bit of consistency there. But that also tells me that maybe this drone isn't meant to be flown like a GPS drone. It's meant to be flown like a pseudo FPV drone, which is an interesting contrast, again, between the two different packages. I think it's going to cater to a variety of different pilots, whether you're looking to get into FPV or just dip your toes in the water rather, because this doesn't seem like it's going to offer a true to form FPV experience. Or if you're more comfortable flying line of sight with a controller that supports GPS functionality, you're gonna have the option to do that as well with the Neo. I'm not gonna list through all of these different parts. You sort of get the picture. If you can read, you can make out what's going on here, but this is certainly a different combination than what we just saw 
saw with the Flymore combo that included the RCN2. Now this is where it gets really interesting with this drone and there's gonna be another image I'm gonna show you that'll make it even more interesting, but let's stick to this one at first. This is the side panel of the DJI Neo box. So you'll see some of the specs there at the top. This drone is going to weigh 135 grams, making it super light and portable. It also plays into some ability to fly over people in the United States. We'll talk about that in a few moments as well. It's got palm takeoff and landing, AI subject tracking and quick shots, which is really cool. It's got multiple multiple control options. We talked about two of them already. We're going to talk about the third one here in just a moment. It's capable of shooting 4K ultra stabilized video. That's a big deal and points to what this drone might be purposed for. And then finally, full coverage propeller guards. Again, going to play into those operations over people and the ability to do so. Before we move into my speculation though, let's just go ahead, go to the bottom of this box and let's talk about what we get included in this particular box because this box is even different from the last box that we got this sort of mirrors the first image that we saw where we've got the dji neo drone we've got three flight batteries which is consistent with what you get with the fly more combo from dji you usually get three batteries for the drone you've got the dji rcn2 that's included here you've got additional propeller guards and a bunch of other stuff as well so really interesting to see the contrast between these packages once again. The last image that I'm going to show you here is actually of the DJI Neo. You'll see here, the body is very much modeled after the DJI Avada 2. The form factor of it is nearly identical, albeit much, much smaller and more lightweight. But what I really wanna focus on here is the control panel on the top of the drone. This is a relatively new thing for DJI to be trying out where you've got drone controls on the actual aircraft's body that aren't the power button. So just pay attention here because we've got some options on the top of the drone that tells me you don't necessarily need a controller to use this drone. It looks like we've got maybe a selfie option or a photo option. We've got a droney option. We've got an orbit option. We've got a bird's eye option, a subject tracking option, and I'm not sure if that's a person or it's supposed to be like a mountain with a sun that indicates landscape, but we do have a final flight mode that I'll be interested to see how it all works together. I know at least five out of the six of these, but the sixth flight mode is going to be interesting to see what comes out of DJI. So now that you've gotten a good look at the DJI Neo and you've looked at the packaging and you've listened to my take, my initial take anyway, on this drone, let's talk about my speculation when it comes to the DJI Neo. So no matter what your experience level is or what type of drones you like to fly, I think we can all agree that the DJI Neo is an interesting little piece of technology. And frankly, it's got my wheels turning. I'm trying to figure out what DJI is trying to accomplish with this drone. What type of consumer are they trying to attract and what are they trying to capture in the market and as my wheels were turning while i was thinking about this drone it clicked do you remember when we talked about this guy right here this is the hover air x1 and we did a review on this drone not too terribly long ago i actually owe you another review on this drone its functionality with a handheld controller but when i thought about the flight modes on the top of the dji neo it got me thinking about the flight modes on the top of the Hover Air X1. DJI's Neo is not only going to be a pseudo tiny whoop or a pseudo cine whoop that's a little bit smaller than the Avada. It's not only going to be a really easy to use drone for operations over people. We'll talk about that in a moment. It's going to be the answer to a drone like this. It is serving the purpose of an easy to use, lightweight and portable selfie camera for content creators. That's what I can assume anyway. And while I think the primary reason for the DJI Neo being released is to compete with Zero Zero Robotics and the Hover Air X1, I think the secondary reason is to empower pilots in the United States and countries that have similar drone laws to the United States to fly over people more easily. Now, truth be told, it's become much easier in the last six months to a year to apply for a waiver to fly over people and get it approved. Thanks in large part to folks like Vic Moss who have been advocating for making that process easier and less cumbersome on drone pilots, as well as just coaching drone pilots on how to best apply for a waiver to fly over people. That said though, the easiest way in my opinion to fly over people is to just go out and get a category one compliant drone. The difficult part of that is it's hard to find a category one compliant drone. You either have to build it yourself, you have to source the parts, or 
you got to buy one that's ready to fly. And up until this point with the DJI Neo, that didn't exist. A lot of people argued that the DJI Mini was category one compliant, but the fact is the propellers can lacerate. And if you put a propeller guard around the propellers, it takes it over that 250 gram threshold. So it was sort of a catch 22 that way. The DJI Mini was never compliant with category one, and there was really not an easy way to make it compliant with category one. The Neo though, will easily fall into the category one compliancy. So that's what I think the secondary purpose for the Neo is, is to empower pilots to be able to fly over people more easily. And that's really honestly a solution that's needed when it comes to the RTF space. I'm not saying we need a hundred drones out flying over open air assemblies. I'm not suggesting that at all. In fact, I think it's a terrible idea, but for people that are responsible and understand the rules, sometimes the rules are a little bit too prohibitive and it's not easy to apply for those waivers and know what needs to be covered in those waivers. And if you remember when I reached out to the FAA asking about how they were going to patrol remote ID, they were less than helpful when they came to giving me answers. So I can imagine applying for a waiver is much the same. You apply for a waiver and they probably don't give you any feedback when they just give you the old decline stamp. When it comes to my speculation on the specific specs for the DJI Neo, I think we are going to see a one over 1.3 inch CMOS sensor on this camera system. It's going to be identical to what we saw in the DJI Avada 2, as well as the DJI 03 air unit. So we're gonna get a really great camera on board this drone. Again, we know it's going to be capable of 4K video. It will also be capable of 12 megapixel photos, which is really exciting because we've never had like a pseudo FPV drone you've been able to take photos with. Not that there'd be any reason to do that anyway, but it's sort of something different and something that is kind of neat and unique to this drone and speaks to its potential power when it comes to operations over people. I think the flight time is gonna be somewhere around 31 minutes, give or take. We might get down into the 20s, but I think DJI would be smart to engineer a battery that works with this drone that allows for at least 31 minutes maximum flight time. When it comes to negatives, we're not gonna have obstacle avoidance on this. I think that there'd be no need for it just based upon the fact that the propellers are completely encased, which means you're probably not going to have too hard of an impact and it'll be easier to recover from an impact in the event that you do run into something. And quite frankly, I don't think that you can make a drone that's 135 grams and still include any type of obstacle avoidance system on board. It just would get too heavy. Despite all of my speculations and predictions, I do have a few questions that I'd like to have cleared up from DJI. I know that won't happen, but in a perfect world, maybe, and maybe we'll get some leaks that'll help to clarify some of these questions. The first one being, will we be able to shoot photos and videos in portrait mode? I mean, if this is a drone that is geared towards hobbyists and content creators with its ability to be easily deployed and really lightweight, easy to fly nature, it would make sense to shoot in portrait mode, at least in my brain it would. The next question is, it's compatible with the DJI RCN2, it's compatible with the DJI RC motion controller, as well as the DJI goggles. Is it going to be compatible with the DJI FPV controller two and three? That's a question I'd like to learn because if it is compatible with those controllers, then I would say that this drone very well could be able to be flown in full manual mode. Time will tell on that and maybe it'll be just as easy as doing a firmware update. I don't know. Again, time will tell on that, but I would like to know if it's going to be compatible with the DJI FPV controller right out of gate or at least sometime down the road. And finally, what will the price point be on the DJI Neo? If we're comparing it to its counterpart in the market, the Hover Air X1, it currently retails for $349 as of the recording of this video. And that's just the base package for the Hover Air X1. So I would expect DJI to be somewhere in that ballpark, depending upon the configuration that you get. If you add more peripherals like the goggles, for instance, it's going to get more expensive. But if you just get the RCN2 with the drone, maybe it's going to be somewhere around three to $350. Time will tell, but I would like to know what DJI plans on marking this at on the initial release. Now that I've blown my hot air about the DJI Neo, I'm interested to know what you think about it. Let me know down in the comments below. Do you plan on buying the DJI Neo? Is it something that interests you? Is it something that you would use? Let me know down in the comments. If you like this video, hit the thumbs up icon down below. It helps me out a lot. It helps get this video out into the algorithm to more viewers like yourself. If you really like this video and you love drone content shot by drones, about drones, and for drone pilots, my friend, this is the channel for you. Make sure you get subscribed if you haven't already. And while you're at it, hit that bell icon. You'll get a notification every time I post a new video. Until next time, I'm Chris, the Drone Geek, and I am out of here. See ya. Yo, yo, what you say?